Well, finally, we're here with um, my brother, master teacher, Morris scientist, Dr. Aline Bay. Um, Doc, why don't you go ahead and just introduce yourself to the um, the people? I'm sure you know you're you're, you're well known as um, you know you've been doing your the work you do for for quite some time now. But in, in the event that there are some people out here who have never heard of you, who've never seen any of your works or any of your lectures or presentations, please just give them a little backdrop, a little um, rundown on who um, Dr. Aline Bay is. All right, I'm Dr. Aline Bay. I've been doing this now for about 25 years. Um, as far as metaphysics, law, occult teachings, esoteric sciences, ontology, astrology, numerology, um, alternative healing, um, herbalism, uh, irisdology, pranic healing, qigong, tai chi, reiki, <laughs> um, doing it all, you know, over the last three, five years and more. Um, I have a, a doctor of divinity degree. I also have a doctorate of metaphysics. So um, basically, that's 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 me in short terms. Now, a lot of people probably are familiar with you from that uh, the debate you did with um, Sarah Suit and Seti back in the um, I guess that was in the nineties or two thousand and nine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, that was a you know that that thing that dealt with with a little bit of some of the historical information. I don't want to get too much sidetracked on that. I just want to reference that that may be where some people are familiar with you from but um you have been doing a lot more than debates and you know arguing with people whether they agree with you know the information that you present or not right well actually how that debate came about was that me and um, brother Sarah Sui said he actually debated various subjects dealing with the Moorish history and information three times prior to that debate on radio shows um since it, I guess it appeared I was the only one that wasn't afraid in order to go against him at the time. Um, yeah, I didn't have the voice like he did, you know, with the rah-rah, you know, and, and the sensationalism or the emotionalism. But the thing is that I was sincere about the information and getting the information out to the people. So that's basically what my goal was, was simply get the information out to the people. We know we're going to have a room full of people. It was the first major debate ever, you know, um, um, in that, I guess of that magnitude in the New York area, you know, um, during that time period, at least for the modern age, you know, uh, we had prior debates, but normally those debates were um, between, you know, um, like, hold on a second, let me close this out. All right. Um, normally, um, as I was saying, normally what happens is that there was prior debates um, before that, like like um, um, Anthony Hiller against um, Dr. Um, Khalid Muhammad, you know, and Dr. Khalid Muhammad, you know, got at him, you know. So you know, and Anthony Hiller is a um, European. So there was debates like that against. You know, our people against their um, best scholars or lecturers or, or whatever you want to refer to them as. Um, you know, you had uh, Francis, Dr. Francis Quest Wellsen, who went up against, um, um, I think his name is Dr. Uh, William Shockley, you know, and um, that was um, a slaughter. <laughs> You know, she she slaughtered him with the information coming from um, her ISIS papers. So, you know, it just shows that over and over again, that type of thing. Well, um, there's been uh, a lot of different debates, obviously, a lot of different um, um, schools of thoughts that that right present different aspects or perspective of of, of the information. Um, and I want to kind of start start off like you know with with with, with one place in particular, a reference point, fourteen ninety two. We always hear about fourteen ninety two, and our people seem to be stuck on it. 
in the sense that um, when we think of 1492, we always think about Columbus sailing the ocean blue and all this you know, nonsense about him discovering, you know, America and, and all this stuff. But what happened? You know, what 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 was some of the other things that was going on in 1492? Like particularly with the um, I believe that was the year when the last Moorish king was defeated in um, Spain. Is that correct? Oh uh, yes, in the last stronghold of the Moors was Granada, Spain, mm -hmm. in which that um they essentially he just gave up, you know, uh, we didn't even go into war. We just simply gave up because we know that we had other import and export businesses and and different things on which that we could have done. And so basically we just gave up the last stronghold, which was Granada, Spain. And some went back into Africa based on um, Stanley Poole's work, um, the Moors of Spain, as well as also the Moors after Spain. Um, you will read within those two texts by Stanley Poole, he speaks of how some Moors returned into other parts of Africa, into Europe, as well as also, um, we find out that according to Ivan von Sonoma, in his book, The Golden Age of the Moors, that some even came here to the Americas. Um, Cause they was already doing import and export uh, worldwide. They was the navigators, as we would say, of the seven seas, even though there's 32 seas um, or so, but you know, they normally say seven seas, talking about the um, seven major um, oceans. Um, so uh, we, we see them, traveling throughout the world and doing import and export and individual by the name of Christopher Columbus or Christopher Cologne, um, in which that some even are speculating if he even exists, that it was a pseudo name in which that was utilized by um, the Portuguese and the Spaniards in order to go and spread their terrorism across the globe, in particular within the North America, Central America, South America, and the adjoining islands. Okay, so um, prior to 1492, um, there are different um, accounts of how long um, the Moors were there for. Uh, some say 700 years, some say 800, I've heard up to 900 years. What is the accurate um, timeline? Well, they normally start counting around 711 AD. That's where you get the 7-Eleven grocery stores from, you know, 7-Eleven. Um, um, so they normally start with around 7-Eleven AD into 1492. So that would give us approximately 800 years. But there was more that was already in Europe um, prior to those time periods. You had um, St. Patrick running the um, snakes out of Ireland. Um, those snakes were who was known as the Pygmies or the Trois people, as we refer to them as, the little small brown people um, who come from out of the interior of Africa, near Uganda um, and Rwanda um, area. Okay, so um, uh, I, the Irish, uh, the Irish, I heard somewhere that they were um, uh, like uh, amalgamated people, all people as well, the Irish. Right. And uh, uh, this is why they, I, um, they, those from, you know, so-called Britain, I don't call it Great Britain, but from Britain, um, they refer to those from in Ireland as um, the green niggas mm -hmm. uh, because of their mixture uh, with those small brown men and women um, known as the Twa people. Um, prior to St. Patrick running them out of Ireland. Um, so there was a lot of mixing going on in that time period um, in those areas. And see, uh, if you get the book, um, Ancient and Moderate Britons by David Matt Ricci, volume one and two, he goes um, extensively into that information. Okay. All right. Now, let me deal with the, the term Moors. Um, there's so much debate now going on. I see people even actively trying to, you know, argue against it as if it's something negative that 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 we're trying to claim. 
what what is your what is your your, your understanding of the term? Where where, where does it come from? Is, is is it a term that we that the Greeks or the Romans call us, or were we calling ourselves more before? And what does it mean? Okay, all right. Um, we have various stills in which that can be found from out of Egypt and out of Ethiopia. Um, the term dates back to Ethiopia. Um, even the written language of the Metu Nature uh, was called um, Moritic. M E R O T I C. Moritic. Uh, excuse me. M O M. Excuse me. M E R O I T I C. So um, that is from the capital, the old capital of Ethiopia called Meru, which is M E um, R O E. All right, um, that becomes M E R U because the O and the U was interchangeable as far as vowels were concerned. If you go to the definition of America, it says the original application of the name of America was Meru, M E R U. And this is why they always compared the so called Indians to being Ethiopians. And they said that the Indians didn't look no different than the Ethiopians. If you get um, Africans and Native Americans by Jack D. Forbes. In that book, he specifically states that the Indians um, look no different than the Ethiopians. So they was considered Ethiopians also, the so-called Indians, because that's how we look. We look just like we do right now, as me and you sit here. And for those who might be, you know, listening and watching this, um, you know, interview take place on Google Hangout. So they look no different than us um, at that time. We are the same people. Um, as a matter of fact, you know that the Omex, who was called the She people, or Amaru, She, or She Amaru, um, that's where the name America comes from. And it's still from Meru, M-E-R-U, which was the capital at one time. You get the book, wonderful, um, wonderful Kushite of the ancient Ethiopian Empire. Um, I think that's the name of it by, um, what's the sister name? Um, um, sister Houston, Dr. Houston. She wrote that book. And in that book, she speaks about how the capital was called Meru um, or Monroe um, prior to even the Greeks utilizing that term. So to the Greeks, anyone who came out of Ethiopia, because the word Ethiopia itself meant burnt face, and they, they uh, replied to um, the people who came out um, of Ethiopia, went up into Egypt as Egyptos, which also means burnt face. And as they came into what is known as Greece, which actually was originally um, ran by the Cretans and the Minoans, the Minoans actually was the followers of men who was our men from out of ancient Egypt. Then as the Europeans came out the Caucasus Mountains 2,000 years ago, well, it was about 2,000 years ago now. Um, and as they, well, I just looked it over more than 2,000 years, but as they came from out of the Caucasus Mountains, they came into the interior of um, Greece. Um, that is where the color um, started to change and People started to amalgamate, became more mulatto. Um, a lot of the information concerning our heritage was um, cast into the Mediterranean Sea. A lot of our statues and information that was once there in what is called Greece. Um, actually, it was referred to as Minoa originally. Um, prior to that, or Cretan or the um, Cretan land. So. You know, that's what we're looking at is the actual origin coming from out of Ethiopia into Kemet or Egypt or Temeri or Temeri or Temeri as they refer to it as. And matter of fact, even the word Temeri is the word Temeru, Temeru, um, as you have Semeru or Semeri or Samaria, um, as you have America, Amaru, you know. So the um, Meru part, it stems from out of Africa into uh, Mesopotamia into the America, the whole of America. So we always use the Meru um, name and the word Meru 
means um, beloved, um, coming from Meru, which was the ancient Egyptian or comedic deity um, of the Queen of Heaven or Set. That was another name for her. Um, as we was the beloved people, it also means um, that we are the sun people, you know, because um, it dealt with, um, with, like I said, the so-called burnt faces. In other words, those who were um, brown and dark skin complexion. So it has a um, it has a long history that you can stretch around the etymological um, you know field several times, right. and, um, and it goes you're saying basically beyond the Greeks because if you're dealing with uh, um, the term being used in America, um, it's you know, and using the term in America beyond the Greeks, the Romans, all all those different um, um, people who a lot of times the word is associated. With right even even when we look at the word american the original americans according to even noah webster dictionary 1828 all the way up until 1936 and 1937 says specifically which is called western universal dictionary specifically states that they are aboriginal copper colored natives all right who was here prior, right, copper colored natives, who was here prior to the invasion of the territory by the Europeans. The original application of the name was Meru, M-E-R-U. So the natives name was Meru. That was our name. So the word more is nothing, it, take the vowels out, it's M-R. You have the const, same consonants, M-R. If you take the vowels out, you know, we know that the vowels, um, simply cause a soul urge change within the word. But the vowels, um, excuse me, but the consonants remains the same. The word consonant stems from the word constant. And if you look at um, Webster Dictionary, constant means that which remains the same. So um, there's no change of frequency as far as the consonants are, are concerned. And they have the same consonant, MR and MR. And on the words of ancient Kemet, that was an owl. And the mouth of Ra, which is called Wu, R U. So M was um, the glyph of an owl, and R U was the mouth of Ra. So you have M R U, like M R, uh, once again, and M R U becomes Maru, you know? So, um, which basically means, once again, in its um, cogn um, cognitive meaning, that we are the children of Ra. You are the sun people. So how do you um how do you 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 reconcile the differences of opinion um, when when people say that's a that's a mistranslation or misinterpretation of what the, those glyphs actually meant? Because um I think I've seen some brothers use the what the E Wallace Budge um symbols he's talking about in, in the book of the the dead that he as he call it. Well well guess what? If you go to um the Book of Ptah Hotep, the oldest book in the world, um, which was written, uh, translated by Asa G. Hilliard, Dr. Asa G. Hilliard, he shows the actual glyph right there in the book. And he translated to mean guardians, the guardians. So um, I don't have a problem with being a guardian because based on Stolen Legacy by George G. James, he states on page, I think it was around between page 32 to 40, um, 39, in between those, those seven pages, he states specifically that the custodians of the ancient mystery school of Egypt were the Moors, hence the custodians or the guardians of those mysteries. Okay, that's beautiful. Um, all right, um, you just mentioned George, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to just segue it, um, to that, but I have an interesting question about that because um, I heard you speak once in a video where you said that he was killing away in a manner that kind of reflected some kind of um, Masonic ritual. Right. Is, is that true or is that just... No, that's true. Okay. He had his, he had his throat slashed from ear to ear and his tongue pulled out. George G.M. James, who wrote Stolen Legacy, this happened to him? Yes. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Yes. Wow. 
Absolutely, Dave was upset because he wrote that book revealing that the Moors were the ancient custodians of the ancient mystery school, meaning that the Europeans weren't. Okay, so y'all make sure y'all go check that out because um, you know that's one of the, one of the books that definitely um, opened my eyes to a lot of the, the information at the time when I was just you know uh, um, breaking into some of this stuff. Um, stolen legacy. I didn't know that, and I said I had to ask you that because like. Um, some 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 attempts to research it. I came up with different people um, where you know even the death certificate showed that he died from um, some kind of cancer of the stomach, I believe. Right. I wasn't sure if that was the same George James James. So you know because I heard you speak about it, I wanted to get the clarity on that. So that that's really really interesting. A lot a lot of people come forth with information, and you know uh, we see. This information is very dangerous. How do you, how do you, you know, you deal with the, the the reality of that, knowing that you are also standing and others like you are standing in the same shoes as some of these uh, people who come before you and, and and presented information that ultimately cost them their lives. Well, the thing is, is that um, as I always tell people, this isn't for punks. You know, um, they think it's just glory is getting in front of people and being able to disseminate information. Um, Sometimes, you know, this is acceptable. You know, the information which that you put your life on the line for, you know, and most of the time it's not grateful. You know, you don't get gratitude for doing so. You it's know. worth it? Hmm? You believe it's worth it Some, all the time? Do you, do you feel like it's worth it? Like, it's worth it from the individual and just enlightening um, each one, teach one. So if I can enlighten just one person, you know, I feel that I did my job. You know, they can take it and carry it on and continue getting the information out, you know, um, public or private. Beautiful. All right, now let's get into some of the history as far as, um, you know, it's a lot. There's been so much misinformation. Um, and, you know, some of it is, is, is stuff that we also present stuff that we, we we present that we don't have full full um data or, or facts on but a lot of it is based on the, the history and just the, the the conditioning that we've gone through as a people over many many years under the, the um the, the 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 current um world order that, that we're living under you know they've they've presented so many different things and you know <clears throat> now you kind of look back and you kind of see why they didn't want you to read or or not to do certain you know literary things because if you know how to read you, you know what I mean a lot of the lies they were telling you wouldn't hold up. So right. one of the big things is is slavery. Mm -hmm. But you know we have we have the, the um the narrative that these the, the America, the Americas, North America, South America, Central America, and the Caribbean islands were basically some curtain was pulled across the whole world where nobody else knew where this place was. For hundreds of thousands of all the time that we've been on this planet, nobody knew that anybody was here. Right, and, millions of years, right? And, exactly. And Christopher Columbus, you know, right. Uh, in 1492, after the last stronghold of the Moors, you know, was was basically surrendered or, or abdicated. Right. Really, he was a spy. Yeah. Um, he <laughs> followed the Moors over here because, like I said, this was one of the strongholds that we had. That's why we just gave. That's why we just gave up. Um, Spain so easily. Yeah. Um, that's why we gave it up um, because this was also a stronghold here. Um, so we already set up camp here. So he came and followed us. Um, actually, um, I think um, around the, I think it was around March of 1492 um, that the Moors um, left Granada and scattered about, and some came here. Um, by September. You know, I guess there was other um, Moors because there was always infighting, no different than what's going on now. Um, there was infighting amongst the Moors. And so they end up telling um, King Fernandez and Queen Isabella um, about the Moors who came over here. So by September, going into October, um, Christopher Columbus or Christopher Colon, um, whatever term that you want to refer to him as, ends up setting shit on um, sale to come and follow us over here. Um, not looking for no damn spices in India, you know, um, you know, but yet ends up crashing into um, the West Indies or as you know, as the Caribbeans or Caribbean. And, um, 
you know, in particular, um, what he referred to as Isabella, which we refer to as Cuba um, to this day. And the reason why it was called Cuba is because of the Kaaba, in which that um, there was Muslims on that land. And matter of fact, according to the diary notes of, um, of Cristobal Colon and also of his son, um, they speak specifically of when they arrived that they seen a mosque on top of the hill and was meted and was greeted at the shores by um, an emperor who spoke Arabic, Hebrew, and Chaldean. That's Arabic, Hebrew, and Chaldean. Now, those were what we refer to as Eastern languages, but yet they were spoken here in the West um, on the island of Cuba. Okay. Okay. Um, wow. So, <clears throat> a lot of stuff happened basically when we look at the history. Right. A lot of stuff and a lot of different ways to interpret it. It's funny how they interpreted it to make it seem like nobody else knew about this place. Right. And, you know, Columbus, you know, looking for spices. And it's well, such a well, neat well, thing. They told us because they knew that it would be a while before we read those diaries. But in those diaries, Christopher Columbus or Cristobal Colon and his son both states that they met, um, you know, of course, um, so-called blacks that was already here. Um, you know, matter of fact, they say they look African um, to them. So that is no different than what they refer to us as now, as being African-American. But they had us believe that they just brought us over here 400 years ago. You know, that the first 20 blacks came 1619. Um, you know, but they'll never speak of the um, 200 whites or Irish who came um, months, nine, almost nine months prior to that. They don't speak about um, Abu Bakari, who came almost nearly 200 years on 2,200 ships and brought his people over here from out of what was called um, the Ghanaian Mali Empire or the Malian Empire, um, which if you ever seen the Malian Empire, that spread it all the way from Niger, Nigeria, um, Mauritania, um, parts of Morocco into um, Ghana, Senegal, Benin, and so, he brought people from those areas here 200 years before, almost 200 years before Christopher Columbus, Christopher Colon. Um, so um, we're looking at a reconstruction of history. And he came on 2,200 ships. All right. Matter of fact, it was the year 1311. And he sailed out 200 ships, only one return out of the 200. And the one that returned said that, you know, that those other ships continue going forward into the current. And then the following year, by 1312, 13, going to 1313, he set um, um, sail with more than, more than 1,000, they said almost up to 2,000 ships. So if people want to say how we got here 400 years ago, well, God damn it, it wasn't by Christopher Columbus. It wasn't by Christopher Colon. It was by Abu Bakari, all right? So um, if they want to say that we are just Africans, that is, that's how they got here. Um, that's, you know, the Europeans didn't bring us here, you know, in masses. But um, but Abu Bakari came with 2,000 ships prior to that, 200 years prior to that. Let's talk about the... Um the Euro European versions of uh, what they said happened. Um, um, <clears throat> the slave, slave, slave ships. How many slave ships would have been necessary to, 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 to basically bring, and how much people would be, be on each ship to cross the ocean over three months? Right. Or however, however long it took. To right. Probably, to have <laughs> populations you have in South America, North north america central america the caribbean islands you know to and how many ships how many, they say thirty five thousand voyages according to your research what, what have you come come back with are those, are, they, are those numbers correct or or no 
Well, based on the information that we received from um, Emory University down in Atlanta, Georgia, um, they stated that over a 309 year period from um, 1619 to 1865, is that allegedly they had about 35,000 um, voyages. But we know that one ship it will only take about three to four months. So that means that one ship can only sail approximately three times the year, um, out the year. All right. So they would have to have calculated how much food. Because see, Abu Bakari and the, and the ship that he took over there, which was 2,200 ships, they weren't making plans on coming back to Africa. <laughs> All right. They had plans on staying here. So, um, so this ain't we ain't talking about you know going back and forth as they was claiming with these um thirty five um thousand um trips. Um, the problem that we have is that I've gone to all the major museums in the world. All right, my wife and I've gone to um, my wife gone to the Louvre in Paris. We've gone to um, the British Museum. We're going to the New York um, Natural um, Science and History Museum. We're going to the Smithsonian. Um, even going to the African, the New African Museum, in which that is in Washington D.C. Um, and going throughout, and going to Italy to those museums. Going to um, throughout the country to various museums, and we have yet to find a slave ship. They keep showing the exact same drawing over and over again. And I have a problem with that because slavery only ended 150 years ago. But yet you just found a ship that they spent 3,500 years ago in Egypt. You know, so that that is a problem that we're having. If the Europeans say that they bought us here, I know them and their mentality. Their mentality would be, um, um, here we refurbish this ship for you, and here go the chains. You can put your hands and arms into them. Let's see if they fit. So, question: Are you saying then that um, they there was no ships that carried black people from Africa um, as slaves to the Americas or the Caribbean, or are you saying that the drawings of the ships that they're showing you are not actual ships? They're just drawings. What are you saying? Right. What I'm saying is that they did not bring the vast majority of us here. Abu Bakari brought us here. Then you had prior to him, because he came to be with his brothers in Mexico, who were the Omex, who were the Nubian Egyptians. The Nubian Egyptians um, were already here thousands of years prior to that. Matter of fact, the Omex is said to have been here nearly 5,000 years ago. All right more than 2,000 years before Christ, all right? So we're looking at, I think they say the calendar um, goes back to 3,113 BC, or 3,111, depending on the books on which that you read. That would be 3,000, more than 3,000 years before Christ. So we're looking at more than a 5,000 year period that the Nubian Egyptians were already here prior to Abu Bakari coming here. All right. Then you have information coming from the Fossums and the Fossums were here over 25,000 to 75,000 years ago, based on estimates coming from National Geographic. Prior to that, you have the Washita who state that they was here over 100,000 years ago. Then based on another book for, called Forbidden Archaeology by Michael Creedmore and Richard L. Thompson, they go back and state that we were here over 600 million years ago. 600 million, you said? 600 million. Wow. There was a blast that was done in Dorchester, Massachusetts, in which that a, a vase, a, a bell-shaped vase was blown out of the wreckage, out of the explosion in which they had exquisite carving all around it. So whoever it was 600 million years ago, they were smelting metal, all 
Okay, so this is why I can't believe what the Europeans said because you're talking about a, a, a group of people who just got here less than 6,000 years ago. And we got history that goes back, which the Smithsonian has been hiding for the last hundred some odd years. So we're talking about various impacts so you're saying over, over hundreds and thousands and millions of years ago. And which that they're not telling us about of Africans coming here. So these oldest Africans would be the first Americans, of course. I.e. us. So our heritage dates back, not just to Africa, but also from out of Australia. Because guess what? There was a Southern Pacific impact that also took place. So we're talking about Africans who left from out of the interior of Africa, spread it across um, into Mesopotamia, into China, into <laughs> Australia. I mean, with that that kind of um, with that kind of um, information right there. Right? But that kind of information right there, it's like basically, basically what I'm hearing is that we were here when the dinosaurs were here. Exactly. Based on that information, the whole theory of evolution is is, is now like in limbo because they said that man, man came about around 200 something thousand years, right? Well, you know, that's a lie. <laughs> that's just based on uh, how the, 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 the fabricated, um, 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 Right, they the doctrines they they, they, they they propagate. But this blood type, old blood type is old blood type, and they dated and they dated back to about um three hundred thousand years ago. So that's the oldest blood type. Um, but that has nothing to do with us being the oldest people. Hey, screen, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, brother. I'm hearing you. Yeah, I was saying that has nothing to do with us being the oldest people on the planet. Um, in which that even according to um, Elijah Muhammad, on Elijah Muhammad, he stated that we have no set um, birth record, and that's why I'm basically showing that the Albions, um, even nowadays in moderate um, archaeology and anthropology, I'm um, have to tell the truth about um, us being on this planet much longer than 300,000 years ago, because they even tell you that there are fossils in which that they're found such as Lucy, which dates back to 2.8 to 3.2 million years ago, even though I know that to be a monkey species. <laughs> you know, I got a question now. Hominoid, you know, but this is what they say. Hey, um, I just came, 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 um, came back from um, Jamaica a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, <clears throat> You always, I always hear about, from us, a little boy growing up, I heard about the Arawak Indians, the Carib Indians, all these different Indians when we know that this is not India, right? right? And, right. and based, on, 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 based on just that spell, because when you hear the word Indian, nobody sees curly or, or woolly hair or texture here like mine or yours. They just see the straight hair. You know, cowboy and you know those Western movies they they, they used to play, they used to show on TV. Right, the Mongolians. The Mongolians, right. Mongol. And right. so mm -hmm. that's what they consider to be Indians. But um, right. talk to me about the history because, like, this is some of the things I wanted to get into. Talk to me about some of the history of um of us being not only in the Americas but in the Caribbean. Like, go into that if, if you if you have some information on that. Right. Well, the Arawak um, were originally the Cherokee, or what is known as the Chikakoi, also referred to as the Selegi, also referred to as the Eninuia people, uh, which means Eninuia actually means we the people, or we <laughs> are the people. Um, so that's oftentimes what the um, vast majority of tribes refer to themselves as, as we the people. This is why. The Constitution starts out with the preamble, we the people. And because um, we know that that information, according to Thomas Jefferson, John Adams, and um, Benjamin Franklin, i.e., it was actually Benjamin Banneker, um, we find out that they got the information and they sat amongst the Iroquois Confederation. All right? And that's where the Constitution comes from. So we're looking at 
the Cherokee, as they left from out of what we now refer to as North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia area, and went down into the Caribbean. All right, so um, you look at that impact, and then we also look at the impact. You had Abu Bakari and his crew, as well as there was many um, concessions or passages that Africans took as they came through, and they will also go into those various islands um, also, and some would stay. So we're looking at, once again, uh, impact over and over again of African upon African, who are now called American, you know? So um, those various impacts over time produced who was known as um, the Arawak, um, later on the Tayano, um, along with the Spanish invasion, um, you know, and that that's what we do know, you know. Um, the Maroons were those who could not be restricted, and they went up into um, in Jamaica. They went up into the mountain uh, mountainous area um, in order to escape prosecution and escape um, oppression from the Albion, the European, in particular of the Britons, from trying to um, capture them and <coughs> take them into slavery, you know. So the Maroons is also where we get the word Maru from. The Maroon, the Maru. So once again, it's the one and the same people. Were the Maroons only in um in the Caribbean or were they also was there groups of them in other places? Oh yes, there was groups of them. Um matter of fact, you, you find the Maroons um in Florida, who they become known as the Seminole. And the Seminoles are also the Yamasi. Um, also, the Gullah Geechee people from out of South Carolina near Beaufort. So they are all one and the same people. Okay, all mm -hmm. right. That's interesting. I mean, because you know, um, in Jamaica, there's a, a um, they, you're right. They're up in the mountains. The, 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 it's called Maroon Town. Yeah. Right. I'm sure you've heard of um, Nanny. Yes, Queen Nanny. Yeah, Queen Nanny. Exactly. Right. Yeah, she's actually buried in Morristown. Right. You know that that that's that's a telltale um, um for you right there. So basically, um, just you know, not swaying away from the whole slavery um conversation. You're saying that slavery didn't happen the way we were taught, right? It but was much more. It was much more. It was much more. Um. It was much more extensive than what they told us. They have us believe that they just brought us all from Africa. But yet they don't tell us that no, they was actually doing there was there's an account in Africans and Native Americans by Jack D. Forbes of over three thousand um Native Americans, i.e. Moors or blacks, Africans being taken from here, from in the Americas to Europe. All right, as well as to Africa. They don't speak about that impact. Um there are also impacts of taking us, getting us from out of Central, the islands, and also South America, and bringing us up into North America. Taking those from North America, bringing them down into the breaking grounds, which was the islands or the Caribbeans, and taking them into Central and South America. So we have a twisting of a lot of the facts that they never told us about of the various impacts over and over again in the various territories. So you might have relatives that was actually once in North America, they're now in the islands, but also those same relatives or ancestors stem all the way back to those who were now in Central America and South America. So once again, you have us all throughout the whole Americas. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of arguments about cultural appropriation, you know, right from our side and then from the sides of people saying that we're trying to you know culturally appropriate us um other another um the native americans heritage well, no we're not saying we only using the term native american because of lack of terminology let's say indigenous americans okay um, because based on the term indigenous we are the oldest people on the face of the planet therefore we are the most indigenous people on the planet period Based on the United Nations, the United Nations definition of indigenous people is this. Those who have historical continuity here 
prior to the invasion of their territories by the Europeans. Two, as well as those who was brought to the new world who freed themselves and wished to be reattached to the culture they've been torn. Now, that includes those who was already here prior to the European invasion, as well as those who allegedly were brought here, you know what I'm saying? Because it wasn't as many as they say, even based on Wikipedia, they say only about 450 to 500,000 people were brought here to North America from out of Africa. Now, we already have millions of people that was already here prior to that. So that means that those um, thousands mixed in with those millions. And there's no way, because at that time, we had about approximately 90 million. All right? And they got our numbers down through um, William Hertz. All right? Um, and um, what's the other guy's name? William Hertz. He did a... Um, he did the ethnic cleansing. We put small pox, uh, General William Hurts, he uh, put small pox on blankets and spread those throughout the various tribes. And so they decimated us from 90 million um, to 25 million. Decimated us. Question right? about that. Is that so, I've, I've probed that, that, that thought and asked the, um, the questions on that. Those numbers. From 90 million to 25 million, that's roughly 65, I mean 55, no, 65 million people, right? Am I, am I, my number is off or am I about right, 65, 65 mm -hmm. 70 million people did of okay. What right. time period did that happen in? And where are the mass graves for all these people? Where, where, you know? That happened between the 1600s to the 1800s. So who was, there was the same person who was spreading the, the blankets was... In particular, the smallpox blankets, that was... Um, that, that go on for? That was the late 1700s to the early um, 1800s when they were uh, spreading those small pockets, um, blankets. Um, and Pontiac, Chief Pontiac was the first one um, to receive those um, blankets and it started from his tribe, this ethnic cleansing. Okay. So um, has anybody discovered any mass graves where, you know, large numbers of bones have been recovered or, or yeah, actually there. downtown Manhattan in New York. It was called the Seneca people. And actually we was from downtown Manhattan, New York, all the way into Central Park. Um they found mass graves. Yeah, I heard about that. that's by the Justice Building. Right. Exactly. I heard about that. But right. I mean, matter of fact I I read or or I believe I, I saw somewhere where it was stated that um, Central Park was what you're calling Seneca Village, right? Right, that's Seneca Village, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And at that time, they happened to look just like us, because how we know that? Because they also refer to it as the slave village. Now, hold up, if they Seneca people, how is it the slave village at the same time? Um, because what they're trying to say is, is that Oh, well, you know, there was a lot of runaways and the Indians, you know, they housed them and, you know, there was a lot of mixing in. No, how about they was already dark skinned native people? This is why you have brothers like um, Old Dirty Bastard, ODB, say that my great grandfather sold the um, um, Manhattan to the Indian, um, 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 Manhattan to the Europeans. You know, um, if you get his information, you find out that it, it actually was his great 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 grandfather, you know, who, when the Europeans came to Manhattan, this is where you get the story that allegedly they sold the island of Manhattan for 24 beads. <laughs> 24 beads. 24 beads. Now, um, we know that is BS. You know, but this is what is alleged because um, you have gold, you have silver, you have precious minerals and stones and rocks and gems, and you want to sell the whole island for twenty-four beads. Hmm, interesting. It's so it's so interesting when when you kind of look at the parallels of those those um, claims that they make because the same the same way they talk about uh, Manhattan. You you have to look at Louisiana. Louisiana, I believe, was once Washita territory. Right, right. And the land, the whole thing was stolen and then sold. Right, in 1803. Right. So, you know, 
Nobody, nobody was selling anything for no trinkets. No. You know? no as a matter of fact, Thomas Jefferson um, stated his sentiments at the time that, um, that the land there was fraudulent because the only thing that Thomas Jefferson actually was trying to acquire and purchase was two barracks and, uh, no, two streets and some barracks, military barracks. Mm -hmm. It was not the whole of um, Louisiana, and it definitely wasn't a whole of Louisiana so called purchase which goes into more than 13 states, into almost the whole of Canada. Okay, so what are some of the sources that you can you can levy um, for people who want to do the research or, or, or have questions? Right, people need um, to the read the case. Slavery as is how you're talking about it, because some people feel it's disrespectful to say that, you know, our ancestors didn't go through what we are. What, I'm, not, I'm not saying that they didn't go through slavery. Slavery existed. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying that that's, that occurred after the conquering of our people that was already here and them switching us from place to place. This is why you, you see the movie Roots. That was accurate about the fact now the movie Roots on hold was a disgrace. But when they was talking about that, they would split off families and have families or members of the families go to this place and to that place. That was true. Roots. You're talking about Alec, that's Alex Haley, um and plagiarism? Right, right. Well, we're talking about the plagiarism part, but um, I, we know about the plagiarism part, but we yeah, talk about, about the, actual, the actual context of what it was right. doing. The context of him showing the, of the families being broken up, that took place. That's real. Mm -hmm. All right. That, that is historical. That's a fact. All right. Um, but that's, uh, what I was saying, though, not, not to cut, cut your wisdom, but... Uh, mm -hmm. But I was saying, though, as far as like how the narrative of slavery is told about 300 to 400 people stuck on ships and the way they're laid out with no bathrooms and no, you know what I mean, no accommodations, really. And people are going to lay there for three months, stiff back, stiff everything, and then come off the boat and go right into the, you know, and that, that's ridiculous. Like, I, I think that part of it is, is where like um, some, some, some more in-depth um, research and more thinking needs to go into to see yeah, what right. we and, and to their fantastic tale. Yeah. Because for, um, you got three, you got two to 500 people um, on a ship, POWs, i.e. so-called slaves. I don't even like using the word slave because that comes from the um, European um, word Slav as in Yugoslavic. And we're not Yugoslavic or from Slav, a Slavian, a Slavanian. Um, so um, we shouldn't even be using that term, slave or Slav. Um, but we know that we were POWs, prisoners of war. And we are in a war state right now um, because they're occupying our land without any compensation. Where's our rent? Where's our lease um, money um, and funds? Um, we shouldn't have to pay taxes. Um, we shouldn't have to do any of these things because you are on our land. It's the United States Corporation of America. America is not of the United States, nor is it a corporation. We are the indigenous people of this landmass. This is why they had to trick us at the hospital and transform us into corporations, making the civilists more to dead in the eyes of the Lord, giving us these false labels, Negro, Blacks, and colors, and etc. Um, so we understand that this whole thing is to treat us as chattel property, but yet we are the indigenous people, you know? And the word chattel is a French word for cattle. So right now we are in an animalistic state and we are rising up out of this animalistic state and um, no longer want to be property because property can't own property. And that's where we're at right now is that we are property being owned as property. And many of us don't want to break out of that. So we rather utilize titles such as Negro, Blacks, and Colors, which is, that's fine. That's what they want to utilize. Um, however, when I look back at Dr. John Henry Clark, and he said, instantaneously, your culture, your heritage, your history must instantaneously tie you back to land. You're, we are people in search of a nationality. As a people in search of a nationality, our nationality must instantaneously tie us back to land. So when I look in the Black Law Dictionary and I look at the word land, 
Now see the word Moors, M O O R S, embedded inside the definition. God damn, how much more do you instantaneously get tied back to land? If not, take on the title of land because Moors and land are synonymous. Hmm. That's deep. That is deep. So um, not to not to jump to 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 fire, but uh, I want you to give the sources for some of the um. That's you know some people could use to research or, or review some of this this the, um, this information, like just you know books that you 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 could recommend that that people can can look into and and. and well, since we're speaking about John Henry Clark, I will make make mention of his book, um, Africans and um, African Holocaust and um um and Columbus, um that particular book coming from him, um the Maafa, um. Um, by sister um Annie. Um, let me see. Um, what they never told you in history class by Indo Kemet Kush. Also, missing pages of history by Indo Kemet Kush. Um, African presence in the Americas by Ivan Bar Dr. Ivan Von Sodoma. Um, we came before Columbus by I Dr. Ivan Von Sodoma. Um, like we said earlier, The Golden Age of the Moors by Ivan von Sertema. Um, Destruction of Black Civilization by Dr. Chancellor Williams. Ancient Future by uh, Professor Wayne Chandler. Egyptian Yoga, Volume 1 and 2 by Dr. Muata Ashby. Um, you know, so these are just some of the books that I make mention of. Okay, that the, um, <clears throat> that people can use to read it. Now, as far as the um, the Moors, the current, the present uh, population or or, 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 or or body of Moors that that people that call themselves Moors in in the United States or in Almoro uh, America. Mm -hmm. Where, what is the genesis of that? Where did is that a continuation of 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 the the, the, the old Moorish Empire, or is it something that starts with um, the more science stuff of America, particularly with Noble Drali? No, even more Noble Drali, even Prophet Noble Drali, he states within chapter forty-seven of the Moorish Holy Quran, circle seven, that we went um, to the ancient Egyptians, and in matter of fact, the whole matter of fact, that chapter was called. Ancient Egypt, the dominion of the um, 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 the um, ancient dominion. So the dominion of where it says that they'll, they'll, um, that dominion stretched all the way from Africa all the way into Mexico, which is the Americas. So this is a continuation of the Kushite Empire because it says old man Kush. So the Kushites becomes the Dogon, the ancient Egyptian. The ancient Egyptian become the Dogon. The Dogon becomes the Omex, who the Mandis or Mandinka people, or the Mandingo. All right? They are here within the Americas over 5,000 years ago. They left out of Egypt. The Dogon left out of Egypt 8,000 years ago. So, All right? So part, part, a portion of them went into Mali. All right? And even the word Mali and Meru are one and the same. M A L I and the R and the L's are interchangeable in the ancient Egyptian or Kemetic language. You know that the Dogon was the ancient Egyptian priest of astrology. They were the astronomers. This is why they did so much with the star constellation, Sirius in particular, and why they still have the Ziggy ceremonies. You know, it's because they show how Sirius A and Sirius B. Um, conjunct and intertwine just like your DNA. And they say that we come from the star constellation Sirius. Uh, hold on. Yeah. All right. So they say that we come from the star constellation Sirius. Mm -hmm. So um, the Dogons um, are the Mandi people or the Mandinka people. You have a, each branch of the Dinka people who are the ancient Egyptians. Who are called the Nubians now. And you have a West branch of the Dinka people who call the Mandinka people, who are also the Dogon people. And they left from out of 
West Africa and came into what we now call South America into the interior of Mexico or the Yucatan um, um, Peninsula, all right, which is now called the Mexican Gulf or, or the Gulf of Mexico, okay? Yeah. Where you find the Omex statues, over 22 statues you found of these king heads, you know, weighing tons upon tons. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. what, they, five tons. Mm -hmm. what do you say to the people, um, especially of uh, the, you know, I guess uh, Mexican heritage, right? Right. Who, who, well, are, who have written books and shown pictures of, of people, Mexicans, who look like the Olmec heads and say, these are who do the Olmecs were. Well, Not well, African, Nubian, or, 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 or the, the, you know, that, that kind of looks similar to them. Right. Well, that's because they never traveled and actually met archaeologists and anthropologists. Um, my wife and I have gone to Mexico several times. And we've gone to Chesa Nisa, Cobol, Tulum, which are the various um, Mexican or uh, Omex sites. And we have talked to the professors and to the tour guides. And they all have said the same thing. They said something happened about four years ago. This was the last time we went was 2012. Before that, we went 2007 to Mexico. All right. Um, in 2012, I got the documentation and I got the footage. It was a Mayan archaeologist. He was a tour guide. And he said specifically that the Omex are the mothers and fathers of civilized Western civilization. <coughs> Western civilization. And he also says that they were Nubian Egyptians. This is what he says. So Egyptians. all those people saying that what he go to Mexico is looking like the Omex head, of course. You are our descendants. <laughs> but you did not originally have no characteristics because you're not the oldest people on the face of the planet. The oldest people on the face of the planet are those who have the darker skin hue. Case closed. Yes. That, is, that is based on archaeology. That is based on anthropological um, um, history. That is based on historical references and teachings. That is based on biblical teachings. I can't go, I can't go no further because the first country that is even mentioned in the Bible is Ethiopia or Cush. <laughs> That's in damn Genesis, the fifth chapter, or the, no, the third chapter. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we can't even go any further back, you know, that, you know, so, so let's just take it at that reference. Every reference is talking about us being the oldest people on the face of the planet, the most indigenous, period. And that's worldwide. We are a global people. Every place that the European have gone, he found relics of us. Whether it's Australia, South America, Central America, the adjoining islands, or what you call the Caribbeans, North America, Europe, Africa, Asia, we've been there. You know, years ago. I, I interviewed uh, Sierra the Duke of Tears. You familiar with him? Of course. Sierra is brilliant, right? And um, he was saying um, how when we were in um, Europe, particularly in Spain, for that duration of time that we were there, if it's 700 or 900 or 1,000 years, that's a long time. We've been, in the, according to, to, to the time the timeline that they've given for us here in America, right? It's right. only been, this country is about almost 300 something years old, right? About 300 years old? Right, about 250 to 300, yeah. Yeah, that's about right. Mm-hmm. If we started coming here, let's just go with the narrative that, you know, 1492 or 1619, because, you know, right. 1492 to 1619 is over 100 years, 100 plus years. And right. you know, why are you talking about? We know Elijah Muhammad said it was really 1555. And, right. Based on um, individual, uh, a seller by the name of um, John Hawkins. Yeah. Uh, John Hawkins. Hawkins, right. Exactly. Yeah. So. I'm just saying, we was in in um, in 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 Spain or Europe for over 700 years. Right. We're living under 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 their rulership now for less than 400, 500 years, right? Right. And look at how we 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 basically um, identify ourselves, the way we dress, the way, or everything. So it's kind of like just mirror. If you want to see an example of what it would have would would was like when we were in in the position. We're seeing it now, but we're on the other side of it. Right. We act like them, we talk like them, we we celebrate their, you know, we win victories for them. You know, we go to the Olympics, we, you know, we go 
or the world with all these different things. This is it was the same way. Right. It had to be this 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 the same exact way. So those people that 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 were um like if America was to dissolve it as as a as a as a nation or a corporation or whatever whatever you know that we want to look at it, right? The people that are here would be would still carry on with the American spirit. Even if they started, you know, even if they, they, they say, you know, you say you want to start your own thing, you do it from the the, the all the, the the time that you've been on the in the American system, you basically have that mindset to carry on to to launch your own thing, even if you do it a little bit different. Right. So the Spanish Empire came up after the Moorish Empire fell. And here in Mexico and a lot of the um the other places where you have people that call themselves Spanish now. Is that's a direct result of the influence of you know the Spanish coming in, because yeah. Mexicans are, are labeled under Spanish. Right. Uh, pretty much all the people um in in, in South America and Central America who speak, you know that tongue they're ref, uh, yeah. referred to as Spanish. But, but Spanish. let me tell you, in 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 Guerrero, Mexico, hmm. there's there's hundreds and thousands millions of blacks in Mexico. Indeed. They don't never show you them. So these are the descendants of the Omex. They are still there to this day. All right. So uh, or of the she people, they are still there, but they don't want us to know that. So they hide them in only ones that they allow in, or the ones that we see, or the lighter skin ones. You know, and they believe that they are, you know, the bearers of civilization. When even according to their own Mayan scholars, because this was a Mayan anthropologist who told us this. All right, he said that the Omex or the Shi people were the mothers and fathers of Western civilization. And not just that, that they were Nubian Egyptians. Mm -hmm. All right, so he told us this as a Mayan. And he said, and I'm a Mayan, and I'm telling you that this is what happened. Now, only reason why they started having to tell the truth because they said something happened four years prior to that. So look at 2012, four years prior to that was 2008, which was the election of Obama. So now they can tell the truth about it. So that was a good thing about Obama getting in office that now the truth was able to come out as far even coming from those who was once hiding it. Because in 2007, when we went to Mexico, my wife and I, and we asked the um, archaeologists about, well, what about the Omex? He said, well, they're the father of civilization. They're the mothers of Western civilization. We're going too much about them. Next question. God damn, hold up. <laughs> That's how that was. Uh, and here it is, five years later, all oh, they knew in Egyptians. They look like you. <laughs> That's powerful, man. That's right. Really powerful. right. So, so, so they know. So this is information that's been hidden. When my wife and I went to the Grand Lodge of England in London, the, the, um, the curator... Um, this was a year later, in 2008. The curator of the museum portion said, how do you feel about the possibilities of your first black president? <laughs> and me and the two brothers that we came there with, I started smiling. And we started looking at my wife, and she already spilled the pain. She said it was more than nine before him. He jumped back and said, who told you that? You're not supposed to know that. Did they tell you that? <laughs> Wow. So, so we know that there's information in which that's hidden. And Negro's going to tell me, posing his moors on a talk show, on a radio show just last week, that there's no conspiracy. Well, goddamn, how come I'm going to Mexico, I'm going to damn England, and everybody around the world know that there's a damn conspiracy for us not to know our heritage here? <laughs> I mean, why, why do you think they don't want us to know our heritage here? What, what's the, the biggest reason in your um you know they had a such they had a such a hard time with us warning um with us warring against them this was not an easy battle they want us to believe that this was easy the Yamasi, the seminole the galagichi people fought them for 200 years fucking them up <laughs> for 200 years we was going at them so why would they want those descendants of the Omex or the sheep people in the southern region of North America to know that we put up a fight and that we are the ones in which they, they're hiding this information from.
But now the world is saying, hey, since Obama got in, we can tell him. What the hell? So Obama opened one of the seals, huh? Right. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, <laughs> no, but probably no, but regardless if you like him or not, that's what happened. And oh. I can, and I bear witness to it because I seen it happen. I witnessed it and heard this happen. You know, I've seen these archaeologists and anthropologists and historians and tour guides and these curators of museums to bear witness to the fact that this information is about us. So we can't get away from that. Yeah. Um, Prophet Noble Juali, are you a member? Of, first of all, are you a, mem a member of the uh, Moorish Science Temple of America? or I'm, I'm, I'm the Grand Sheik of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, yes. Oh, so you have your own temple or you're not a part of the Moorish Science Temple of America? We are the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, which is um, the civic side in which that was formed by Prophet Noble Juali in 1926. Oh. Not the religious side, but the civic side. You deal with the science of law. Science of law. Gotcha. All right. Noble Juali, can you tell us a little bit about who he was and, um, you know, who, who some of his... Noble Juali um, was born in 1886 right here in North Carolina on the Cherokee Reservation, which is about 25 miles away from where um, I um, currently live, which is called Clinton on the Chohari Reservation, which is a remnant of the Cherokee people um, in Simpson County, or what he referred to as Simpson Buck County. Um, the fact that he was raised on the Cherokee Reservation shows that he was already trying to tell you something that we was the so-called natives here. You know, the fact that he even revealed that part. Um, later on, um, as he got older after the death of his parents, he moved with his uh, family um, and got adopted um, in Virginia, in Norfolk, Virginia, near Hampton. And he became a railway um, um, on the train of port. Um, so um, he also, in the early 1900s, uh, became a Baptist minister. It was getting ready to form a Christian um, version. Um, allegedly, he went to Egypt and he met individuals such as the same teacher of Marcus Garvey by the name of Deuce Muhammad Ali. All right. So not only did Deuce Muhammad Ali raise Prophet Noble Drew Ali, but also he, as we know, he helped raise. Um, Marcus Mosea Garvey. Um, so later on, we find that from that teaching, he also meet Solomon. Um, and Solomon, um, I believe is Solomon Muhammad, or Solomon Muhammad. Um, and he meets Solomon Muhammad, if I'm not mistaken, that's his name. And he meets him in Egypt, and he um, actually asked Solomon Muhammad to come um, to America in order to help him teach and to help him um, put um, this temple together, which becomes the Canaanite temple in 1913. Um, Solomon was already a high degree um, mason, all right? As a matter of fact, he was um, part of the Medina Masonic um trying to masonic um actually uh, i guess you could say more so of the memphis right of uh, uh, the mesero memphis right all right something like that um and i think he had like the 96 degree and you know so this temple of canaanite this is why um or canaanite temple this is why we find that the more science temple of america or the more holy temple of science or the more divine national movement more national movement, divine movement, we find that it was set up on Masonic principles because it came by way of them um, and their Masonic teachings um, coming from Solomon. Um, and um, so Noble Dralee left the Canaanite temple, which was in um, 
Newark, New, Jer- um, in New New Jersey, and he goes to um, Chicago by 1916, and he forms the Moabite um, Holy Temple of Science of the World, the Moabite Holy Temple of Science of the World, which is the Moorish Holy Temple of Science of the World. Um, and he formed that on May 1st, 1916, right? And from that comes by 1925 going to 1926, the Moorish Temple of Science, Moorish Temple of Science, uh, or the Moorish Science Temple, as it was also referred to as, it was also known as a lost temple of Islam. Hmm. By 1928, they go and put together the more science temple of America, all right? Which everything that they did, which was the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, they did the chamber lessons under that, the 101s, or actually before that, the 102s. Um, they also did um, uh, uh, the adept chamber lessons, I should say under 1925 and 1926 with the civic side, which was the Moorish Moorish Holy Temple of Science, or the Moorish um, Science Temple on that side. It wasn't until a year later, Mm. uh, actually two years later in 1928, that Prophet Nobu puts together the Moorish Science Temple. And he said that that was a need for religious protection the change from the civic side, which was done through the Secretary of State, to now the county side, which would have protected through the Hurt um, um, statutes. The Hurt statutes gave religious protection, all right, in which that um, made it a 508. Because by, and this is where some of the temples are falling at today, because a lot of them are still, or uh, have been filed under a 508, I mean, under um, 501c3 instead of a 508. I wish that Prophet Nobudra Ali put together. All right. Um, so a 508 do not have to stop being political in any shape, form, or fashion. They can still be political. Um, unlike a 501c3, it can't be political. If they um, try to be political in any shape, form, or fashion, um, their tax exemption can be stripped away from them. For 501c3. Right, for a 501c3. Oh. Their tax exemption can be stripped from them um, and you know, so forth and so on. For a 508, um, that's not too much to worry about. So being that Prophet Nobu Jali put together that by 1928, the Moral Science of America, it was, um, which was, shoot, more than 35 years before Linda B. Johnson got into presidency in which that he uh, formed the 501c3 in order to stop churches uh, from being political and being um, politicalized. Um, politicalized. Um, he did not want them to be political in any shape, form, or fashion, so that was a conspiracy once again. But any temple that comes forth will have to do it up from the Prophet of Ali under that 508 status all based on the hurt um, statues. Um, the herd um, statues, or some refer to as the herd divine statues. Um, it's just the herd um, statues to me. But it does deal with um, that information. So Prophet Nob Dali knew what he was doing because that offered protection under the amendments in which that legislation can't be um, done by um, the House, you know, which is the Senate as well as also the representatives in any shape, form, or fashion, which is Congress can't be um, legislated against. Um, religion can't be legislated against. So that was a part of protection for us. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I have a question. Um, and I hope this, nobody will take this as a disrespectful question. It's, it's really a, a question that I've pondered. Now the term profit, right? Is it, a, is, it a, is, is it synonymous with a degree from like yes. knowledge? A strong, a strong yeah. degree. Yeah, like a, exactly. It, so I, I was curious if it was just a degree because when people hear the term prophet or grand sheik or master, bill, you know, these worshipful this and some of these titles are they're just degrees that 
is the knowing that you know you have a certain amount of knowledge or you've gone through a certain initiation where it's the level that you're at right now. It's not a spooky thing. At least that's what I was thinking, might it can't be a spooky thing, like you know, right. you know, some voice spoke to him out of the heavens and <laughs> Now you can see the future. I mean, that is, am I wrong in, in making that? No. no. Um, Prophet Liberdali came to reveal the secrets in the secret societies um, as compared to those who concealed the secrets in the secret societies. When you see Prophet Liberdali, you with his hand over his heart like this, this means that he comes to reveal the secrets. When you see a mason with their hand inside like this, like you see Napoleon in them, they come to conceal the secrets. All right? So Prophet Nobudra Ali um, said that he come to, based on the old um, statements and prophecies of Prophet Nobudra Ali, he come to reveal um, the secrets held by the secret societies. And um, basically that is the old way to give it away in the preamble of the Moral Shorty Quran Circle 7. If you read the beginning of that, it says that the secrets was in India, the secrets was in, um, you know, in in um, Arabia and different other places, and those secrets are now to be revealed. I um, mean, this time, so um, he was here to reveal those secrets, and um, basically he revealed it through his adept chamber um, lessons to those who went to the temple. Okay, so we had Moors in Africa. Mm -hmm. Moors in, in, in um, Europe, we had Moors in, in, in the Americas. Did we have Moors in Asia, in Australia, in Antarctica, and all the other, the other continents as well? Or what? If you, get, if you get the book African Present, um, African Early Presence in Asia by Avin Barcelona, he breaks that down that there was already African presence there. Matter of fact, they're the ones who built the pyramids um, um, at um, Xi'an. Uh, which is in the province of Xi'an, which is um, in China, uh, which the Chinese people them, um, themselves say that they don't know who built it. Um, but we do, and that was us, once again, because we're the ones who had the pyramid science um, at that particular time. Um, so um, that same information of science we took around the world. So if you see pyramids um, or mounds, that was us because we was doing the same thing, just like on your physical body, you had pressure points and meridians, um, which would correlate, correlate um, to the world as ley lines and um, and um, certain energy grades. When you say when you say that was us, do you mean that was it was uh, melanated people that went to melanated people gave the people that the technology to build those things, or was it melanated people that literally built it? Yeah, the melanated people who literally built it. Okay. Oh, that's about like the word Xi'an actually is the word Shang, and Shang is short for Shang Go, which is Yoruba, Yoruba um, from out of the um, Nigeria, um, yeah, the um, tribe of the Yoruba. And the Yoruba traveled from out of Africa um, into what is now called Asia, and they set up the first dynasty um, called the Shang Dynasty. And the word Shang comes from the word Shang Go. Um, matter of fact, the word Chinese is a Yoruba word, which means protected. Interesting. Because uh, when, when we talk about the Moors, mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, in my mind, I don't, I don't group them as one thing where I see, you know, like all everybody in Africa is a Moor. Even though that can be a general description, because as an adjective, if it's describing, you know, a space and our phenotype and our answer. Well, the word more simply means dark skin complexion. So, yeah. right. But, but as 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 a, as a as a as a noun, like you said in Egypt, Egypt the word meant guardian and right. and custodian and these, these, right, right. That's separate now. So. Right. Yeah, everybody wasn't a guardian. Everybody wasn't a custodian. So, who were the guardians? Were there are people that went through a certain. Oh my God. Good gosh, everything ringing. You lighting up, bro. <laughs> you lighting up. Bro. That'd be a good thing for some money. All right, I'm ready. 
<laughs> yeah, what I was saying though, what I was, I was, I was the gist of what I was, I was, I was trying to say is, um, as, as, as far as who the Moors were in these different places, mm-hmm. it, it couldn't have just been everybody that had dark, dark, dark hue or whatever. Even though that's a description that pretty much, you know. Anybody that had, had, had melanated, um, um, uh, melanated uh, complexion or whatever would, would fit the description, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they were Egyptians or Ethiopians or Nubians or, you know, the people, the, the Washita, because, you know, they all had, they still had like, um, I, I don't know what you call it, is that a tribal thing? Their tribal identity? Right, they still had tribal identity. Yeah, they still had their tribal identity. So, so the Egyptians had... Mm-hmm. You know, had you know, everybody knew what they who they who they were. Even right. though I think the prophet of Jali referred to El and Bay as tribal names. Yes. You know, so you know, um, yeah, we still had our tribal names. But the so more was more like uh was that a tribal name as well for us, or was that just a national that was, that was a general name for all of us. For all of us. Right. Um you have to uh, understand is that when I'm talking about those who built the pyramids and the mounds, these were highly advanced individuals of people of civilization. Mm-hmm. Um, they belonged to ancient mystery school of Kemet or Ethiopia, mm-hmm. Kush, the ancient mystery school of Kush, basically. Mm-hmm. And um, they spread it throughout the world, you know, and they brought those teachings to those regions wherever they were, you know, um, and to those people. You know, so, you know, this was about spreading knowledge at one time, unlike that it is now. So for you, Dr. Aleem, and for um, for many of the other other people who um, consider themselves more, I consider myself a more. I consider myself a Hebrew. I consider myself a, you know, I don't separate myself from the history and the culture that our people have created because these are all these things are things that we manifested, that we brought into, into reality. So it doesn't matter that you know a, 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 sec, a, a segment of us it had goes by another name you know what i mean it's, it's right. by, by, by ostracizing yourself for one you actually exclude yourself from all oh exactly right but um it's because there's so much confusion and so much debating that constantly going on especially on social media where people get behind a keyboard and become super thugs or you know right, right. right. they become they become self-proclaimed yeah uh, Grand sheiks and um, you know, grand um, of Alibaba, you know, <laughs> so, you know, and um, you know, they become the supreme historian. Exactly. And, and, and um, as um, brother um, Sarasun said, he said, it ain't even been from around the corner. <laughs> you know, they ain't going nowhere but from around the corner to the, um, from the bodega. You know what I'm saying? And yet they they know all this information and they done been everywhere. It ain't even going. You know, out the country, they don't even have a passport. You know, but yet them been somewhere and, and got some information. Yeah, they got some information, but they don't. You know, and they think that um, the information they have is is all the information there is. I mean, sometimes it's just a perception, and it's hard to argue with someone's perception. And and it's funny because um, I remember once uh, a queen was trying to explain that to me, and I didn't get it at the time. You know what I mean? Like you can't argue with somebody's perception because the way you perceive something is the way you perceive it. You know? Right. That's for you. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody can't argue with your perception. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody can't argue with your perception because right. it's your perception. All right. So here we are. This, we are great people. We go back millions of years, probably billions of years even, based on like, you know, all the new information that keeps on unveiling and keeps on. Um, we all the people on this planet you know they're our children that's how i look at them they're our children they're our offsprings right. we taught them pretty much you know the, the 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 things they know and the things they're using to even hold us back or hold us down so here we are we're, we're, we're the grandparents of, uh, we're the great 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 grandparents on, on the planet and our children now right they want to have their empire and their time so what's the difference what's the difference between them we what what we have and what um what they want to have or what they what they're doing. Well, the difference is is that we don't want to suppress or oppress or depress anyone. We simply want our stand on this planet to be that of equality. 
But did we not also enslave them, though? Didn't, wasn't there a time when we enslaved Yes, yes but, but even Prophet Muhammad Ali stated that once we come back in power, this time show love. So yes, that showed that we at one time did not show love. We were the cruel people, mm -hmm. you know? And yes, we did enslave them. As a matter of fact, up until the 1800s, the majority of those who were enslaved was Europeans. It was Irish and Slavs, Slavic, some um, Slavians, um, you know, people. You know, that's who we held in captivity. Yeah, sometimes I think this is more like the whole thing is really just a spell that has us thinking that, you know, the way we do cruelty is better than the way other people do cruelty. To the point where when you think about, um, you know, even the ancient Egyptians who were great people, they did many, you know, they, their civilization laid the foundation for, for pretty much the world civilization today, but they went to war with nations. And they didn't go to go to war with those nations with onks. You know what I mean? They didn't go in there and, and try to piece people down. They went in there with shields and swords and you know spears and, and arrows. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and you know, kids got killed, women got killed, you know, innocent people, you know, all kinds of brutality came came through through different peoples. I'm not saying that to give Europeans a pass for their cruelty or Arabs or, or anyone. Right. You see, this this is the problem with the way that they have done their thing. The problem is, is that this becomes the first recorded historical event where your culture, your religion, your language was stripped from you. Your folkways, your mores, everything was stripped from you. And you just an empty vessel based on their oppression, based on their indoctrination, based on their training. You know, this is the first time that this has ever happened in recorded history because even when we did tribal wars in africa um that individual who that might have been held captive could actually become the chief of the damn tribe <laughs> we didn't hold or stop that individual they had that potential they went before the witch doctor you know what i'm saying and the witch, if the witch doctor said yo this individual is great you need to groom them that's what our tribe did you see, some, some would say uh, some people would argue that that's kind of similar to the, um, some of the, the first, the, you know, we always go, oh, the first black person do this first. Obama becoming the first president is kind of like, you know, going from that polarity from slave to president. Well, you know? what happened was is that they didn't realize what was going to take place. And they wasn't too sure about the Omec Mayan calendar being set up. Mm -hmm. And that it ended December the 21st, 2012. Mm -hmm. right, let me, uh, hold on. All right. So they didn't realize. You know, what was that? They're saying about the Olmex. Right, right. Canada. The European didn't realize or know for sure what was going to happen in um december the 21st 2012 so to make sure that nothing was going to happen bad they had to put a brother in position <laughs> <All right. laughs> are you serious? yeah i'm serious you're saying that basically like they yes. they yes taylor made everything from 2008 to yes this time just to make sure just in case just in case came back out of the clouds Right. And wanted back their world, the, the head of it would be a black man and a black woman. That's powerful. Yeah. I never I never made that connection. That's deep. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 why they did that. Um, they had to make sure that it was a melanated uh, man and woman in position um, as 2012 came because that was already recorded. Prophet Noble Jali in his um, in his oral statements and prophecies stated that um, you will have a um, Asiatic president, in other words, the Moorish, um, Asiatic Moorish president, and you will have a European vice president. Now, this was recorded back in allegedly in 1928. Mm -hmm. um, so he said, if the European um, is um, truthful and um, if they focus is on the real plan, then that's what will take place, and that the Moors will come into their own by 2000. Now, he states this, that the Moors will come into their own by 2000. So here it is, by 2000, eight years later, 
this prophecy again takes place with Prophet Noble Ali, stating that, you know, you will have an Asiatic president and a European vice president. That becomes Barack Obama, it becomes Joe Biden. Question. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've seen in some of uh, the literature that sometimes get passed around as, as, uh, as you know, history, um, that um, there were several uh, melanated, pre several other presidents, not necessarily melanated, but presidents who is melanated. Were, 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 were black or, 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 or of um, African ancestry or mixed, mixed ancestry. Right. What is your take on that? It's true. How many, how many presidents were there? And who were they? It's specifically it's about, it's about, let me see, it was eight during the Articles of Confederation. Who were they? Well, the, actually it was eight during the Articles of Association and during the Article of Confederation to the Constitution, it was um, eight more, if I'm not mistaken. So um, this is where they say that the ninth president of the United States actually is George Washington, who they refer to as the first president of the United States. Mm -hmm. But there was eight before him and then eight more um, before. Um, so we're talking about from 1774, you had um, the first president, um, you had um, several of them. You had John Hancock, you had John Hanson, you had Elijah Bolton, you had... Um, John Hanson. Mm -hmm. That's the name. I remember um, hearing something about him. Yeah, and John Hanson was the first president under the Articles of, of um, Confederation, 1781. Or was he a white man? He was a brother. He was melanated. Okay. He was a boy. Matter of fact, he's on the back of the $2 bill. Have you seen the photo credits on that bill to see if that's actually him? I'm not talking about that particular photograph. The photograph is also a painting of him as a mulatto. Oh. Um, we wish that they have a film. Um, there's also another painting. Um, matter of fact, you look on the back of the $2 bill, um, they have two brothers sitting on the back of the $2 bill. And how you know? Because their faces are etched in darker than everyone else that's on the $2 bill. The one that is sitting to the left is John Hanson. The one sitting to the right is Chief um, Justice Benjamin um, Banneker of Ben Bay Emanuel Muali. Where can we source some of this, this information to kind of verify it for, um, for you, you, Actually, you can get it from my book. I have all of it in my book, The First World Order. Go ahead. I have, I have all of the presidents prior yeah. to George Washington, um, prior to him in my book. Do you have a copy of the book you could flash or, or just tell us where they could get it? Um, yeah, um, you can actually get it from, uh, let me see if I got it um, on here, but you can get the book from my website, DrAlimelBay.com, First World Order. Um, so, you know, you can definitely get it from there. And let me see, uh, it's been a minute since I did um, that lecture. Also, I have a lecture that I did, um, it's on, on, on my YouTube page. Well, I break down all of the presidents prior to George Washington and how long they served, what their names were, the years, mm -hmm. and everything. You know, so um, I think people definitely need to see that. I mean, history has been whitewashed. So some of the pictures in which that you would see is that of European. But um, if you go to Thomas Jefferson, you'll find that Thomas Jefferson was Europeanized because um, if you get the five Negro presidents by J.E. Rogers, he showed that Thomas Jefferson was a mulatto, was a Moor. Um, he also, um, also in the book by our sister Arsette, in her book, The Six Black Presidents, she shows that Thomas Jefferson was also um, a Moor. So this Europeanized picture of him with this long flowing hair going to the back and with these European features is not really um, Thomas Jefferson, that is European eye version, just as we found out that Abraham Lincoln, we go to the Library of Congress, they used to call him Africanus, um, um, Africanus, um, Abraham Africanus, and Africanus because he was a so-called black. Douglas was d doing a debate against, um, against him, all right, and referred to his dark features, referred to him as being a Moor, basically. 
Yeah. And even Abraham Lincoln refers to himself as having dark, swarthy skin. So, I mean, all these things keep showing over and over again. So these interpretations and these renditions and reconstructed history that the European is showing us is incorrect. And like I said, when we went to the library, um, when we went to the um, um, the Grand Lodge of England, the United Grand Lodge of England, the curator asked us about the possibilities of the first black president. And my wife touched around and said there was at least nine before him. And like, like I said, he jumped back and was like who told you that you're not supposed to know that did they tell you that who is the they he talking about his european masonic brothers here did they spill the beans did they let that information out because they're not supposed to have let that information out well the cat is out the bag now we already know who they were their names and everything so people can go to my book the first world order um as well as also to the videotape that i put um on my web on website it's called um uh, barack obama was not the first black president mm -hmm. right president barack obama not the first black president all right so y'all can go to my web um go to my youtube page and um see that okay um before we get we, we wrap it up and um so I, I want you to state your website again um just so people can can go to it and also your youtube which I, I'll probably I'll put in, in the descriptions for those who are watching or those who will view this later on. Okay. Um, right, it's Dr. Aleem L. Bay, D R A L I A L I M E L B E Y, Dr. Aleem L. Bay dot com. Well, based on Black's Law Dictionary, um, free white person is a naturalization term based on the Naturalization Act of the um, 1798, if I'm not mistaken, but um, what it states is that basically everyone of mixed heritage, um, except for the European and the um, Aryans and the Syrian, um, as well as the um, Syrian Asiatics, are what is known as, can be um, known as free white person. Um, then you have white people, a white person in the Black Law Dictionary, which does include Caucasians in the scenario. However, free white person does not include Caucasians nor Aryans nor um serial um um asiatics so they do not refer to them as such um so they cannot be classified as free white person um however those of out of um out of spain and portugal that of moorish heritage can be all right um so it also says that europeans of uh, you know uh which are Caucasians are known as white person or white people. So that's that correlates to that. All right. Um, black store dictionary. Um, like I said, black is talking about according to the science. Um, it means death, but it's talking about civilist more too, so it means dead in the eyes of the law. Um, so that's really what it's talking about. Can you see my screen? I'm seeing your screen actually. Um, I was gonna tell you. Um, uh, you could uh, unshare it now because, yeah, I saw the the cartoon. When was that cartoon done? What year? Do you know the specific year it was done? Yeah, it's from the Library of Congress, LC Control Number One Two Zero Zero Seven Seven One Three. Type of material: book, print, microform, electronic, etc. Personal name: Africanus. Um, Abraham Africanus One from the Old Catalog. Main title: His Secret Life. Um, so that's his secret life. All right. Um, let me show you also. Let's see if I can find it. If I have it in this one. I can show you the um, president's. Hopefully I got it in here. Right here. Um, the five Negro presidents by Jay Rogers and the six black presidents by um, Black Blood, White Mass by Offset um, Lakufu. In the Gravain collection, there are over 200 letters to the Bay of Morocco from the Continental Congress. Um, let, let me see if they, um, okay, this is just one of the letters. Let me see if I got the actual uh, things in here. And I have it in this one, but I have it though. 
because you have four constitutions. You have the Articles of Association, 1774. You have the Articles of Confederation, 1781. You have the um, Declaration of Independence, 1776. And you have the Constitution for the United States of America, 1789. All right, so this is what I was talking about. Um, there's two governments in the so-called North America region, a Mexum, um, Atlantis, Atlantis, or um, Atslan, and you have one which was the Morris federal government or the Continental Congress, and the other was the European state or corporation pseudo government, um, which is now known as the so called federal government. But there were eight Continental Congress presidents, all right? And um, the presidents were Moorish, presidents of the Moorish federal government, as previously mentioned. The imposter George Washington, who was Adam Weiser of the age of nine. Um, stated that he ch um, chopped down the cherry tree and cut down the cherry tree. Metaphysically, that was the story, a symbolic reference about George Washington, who was out of Weiss of actually being the ninth president of the United States, 1789, and not the first president, which would have been 1781, based on the Articles of Confederation. Um, right here, um, this individual is said to have been. Um, um, it said, this is the picture that you just talking about. This is the individual who is said to have been um, John Hansen, but we know that this is actually the library um, um, congressman. Um, he was an ambassador, actually, to he, Liberia. He named himself after John Hansen, somebody. Right, right. but I'm going to show you. I hope I hope I have it in this book, but I, I show you the actual pictures of John Hansen, even the paintings. But here you have the president of the Continental Congress, you have Peyton Randolph, um, September 5th, 1774. He was the great great grandfather, great grandfather of Pastel Beverly Randolph, um, who was known as the late Supreme Grand Master of all the Rose Christians in the world. Um, he was a Mason. You had two, Henry Milliton, October the 22nd, 1774. Then Peyton Randolph becomes president again, May 10th, 1775. And you have John Hancock, as I was talking about, he was the first to sign the Declaration of the Rights of, in, of um, Independence, Declaration of Independence. He was also amazing, and he was um, the president of the, um, of the Continental Congress from May 24th, 1775. You have Henry Lawrence, November the 1st, 1774, in Mason. John Jay, um, um, December the 10th, 1778. Samuel Hunterton. September the 28th, 1779, Thomas McCain, July 10th, 1781, after which eight other Moors followed this president. 10 of the signers of the articles and nine signers of the declaration and 13 signers of the constitution. And only this number were or would become Freemasons. So even so, this is an excellent percentage of the participants. All right, it goes on. Um, you have um, here the Masonic members, memberships um, this is if you want to study any, um, any further. This is the Masonic membership of the Founding Fathers Masonic um, Service Association. This is actually a book. And here it is, presence on the Articles of Confederation. John Hansen is number one, November the 5th, 1782 to November 1783. Um, Elias Bolton, though, November the 4th, 1782. Um, excuse me, it's supposed to be 83 to November 80. Um, um, that's supposed to be November the 5th, 1781, excuse me, to November the 1782 for John Hansen. Then in last vote note from November the 4th, 1782 to November the 83, Thomas Mifflin from November the 3rd, 1783 to November the 1784. He was one of the signers of the Constitution. Richard Henry Lee, November the 30th, 1784 to November 1785. John Hancock. So you see John Hancock was the president under the Articles of Confederation and the Articles of Association. John Han and well is also the sign of the first one to put his John Hancock on the Declaration of Independence. November 23rd to 1785, June 1786. Nathaniel Goham, um, June 6, 1786, February 1782. He's also a sign of the Constitution. Arthur S. Um, Clare, February the 2nd, 1787, January 1788, he was a Mason. Cypress Griffins, January the 22nd, 1788 through 1789. Of course, then, interestingly, there was no states because the first state was Delaware, which was ratified on December the 7th, 
1787. All right, so this is when um, the first state comes into play. All right, so um, that is the information that I have on that. Um, this is what I was talking about on the back of the $2 bill right here. You can see them clearly. And you can also find this information more dirty little secrets by Dr. Claude Anderson. So you're saying those two guys that we're looking at, and yes. black and white painting or sketch, these were yes. black people because why? Yeah. Just look at their faces. Their oh, faces is okay. it's, it's, it's a darker, it, it's more um, darkening. Right, right. And this is on the back of the two dollar bill. All they did was blow it up. This on the back of the two dollar bill. You can look at it yourself. And they happen to be darker. So this man that is here to the left is John Hansen, the first president of the Continental um, Congress. The man on who soon become the first president of the Continental Congress, he's the one who actually provoked the Europeans into signing, um, you know, um, the Declaration of Independence. All right. And here you have Ben Bay Emmanuel Moore Ali, known as Ben um, Benjamin Banneker. Um, who was to the right? Okay. May I ask you a question, um, um, Dr. Alim? Um, mm -hmm. These, um, these uh, uh, people on the back of the bills, do they have photo credits for them um, in the Library of Congress that you could look, you could pull in and look up? No. As a matter of fact, that's what I was getting ready to show you right here. The John, just the John Turnbull um, painting. And as you see, they're nowhere to be found on this painting. So, no, this is something to wish that um, they've been trying to hide. Um, the United States, this is the United States Capitol Rotunda painting, and the brown skinned men or man um, does not appear. So, in the John um, Turnbull, you, you do not see them um, at all on here, so, but yet it's on the back of the two dollar bill. So, so, other than these, um, these paintings right here, um, the names that you mentioned for the seven or the eight or the mm -hmm. That was the signers of the council, right? That was the signers. How do we verify that these people were indeed like um, um, melanated people, or people of, of you know of our hue and, and climb or, or, or only, you know? only because that we had our own um, presidency um, of the Iroquois Confederation at that time, and we the ones who helped them write the Constitution, in which that Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, and John Adams all agree according to their information states that we helped them do so. They, 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 they so, 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 so prior to them even coming into, um, because remember, they sought protection from, um, from us to help them because they was running from England, King George III, who was also a Moor, all right? And he married King George III, married Sophia, all right, Sophia Stewart. And who was Sophia Stewart or Sophia? Sophia um, Charlotte, all right? That was her name, Sophia Charlotte or Charlotte. Queen Charlotte. As in Queen Charlotte, right. And it is her in which that Charlotte, North Carolina is named after here. But she was also melanated, a Moor. So you had a Moorish couple during that time who was prosecuting um, their slaves, um, who was the Europeans, uh, English and Irish at that time. And from out of their prison system, they released them onto our shores. And we're still dealing with the same barbaric, psychopathic attitudes from that ancestry that was released then by those Gurdish um, Moors um, in which that um, relinquished that upon us here on, on our territory. And we have been dealing with these individuals now for the last 400 years. Okay, so basically you're saying that we are keeping our own, our own records of like all of our activities with these people. And uh, so some of this stuff can be verified through... Uh, it can be verified through certain books, in particular, um, The Rise of the Moors, uh, written by Taj Tariq Bey. Um, um, that, that book in particular is real good. My book, First World Order, um, written by me. Um, is excellent to get. Um, oh man, there's so many um, books, and I already made a lot of mention of the other books. Um, Barbary Powers. You get the book Barbary Powers by um, 
David Matricci speaks about this, how the Europeans had to pay us tribute because the Moors controlled the seas. So anytime that they had to sell somewhere, they had to pay us tribute. Mm -hmm. Right? So this is also how we know that they couldn't have bought millions of us here because they had to pay us tribute. Um, you know, all the way up until the um um early 1900s. Matter of fact, the Ottoman Empire didn't end until 1914, World War One. And as a matter of fact, that's why they started World War One. Was to end the rule of the Ottoman Empire, so they can come in with more reconstructing history. Because we know that originally America was never founded on a Christian religion; it was founded on Islam. This is why Thomas Jefferson had a Quran, and why recently that the one of the senators just got um, um, during the time when Barack Obama was in office as president, got um, sent into the Senate with his hand on the Holy Quran. He affirmed on the Holy Quran instead of the Bible. Mm. So the power of um of history, man. There's so much that we don't know. Uh, yeah, we have no information on, on, on a lot of, and some of it we do have information on. Now, right. as far as the books go, like a lot of times when I um I, you know I hear people talk about books, I am not always you know I don't always jump out of my skin because a book is just a collection of your pers you know your, your own point of view unless it's backed up by 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 um by you know sound. Right. Search. Well, that's that's why I was giving books. I wasn't talking about channeled information. Yeah, um, I feel, I, I, I feel, and that's what I'm getting to. I'm getting to, to, to that. You know, are these, mm -hmm. some of these books are they are they just based on conjecture or are they well sourced? Um, how, you know. Oh yeah. Are you endorsing them fully with, with confidence? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Bob, um, Bob, any book by David Matt Ritchie. Uh, will get you to the truth, get you closer to the truth than any book in which that you will read on history today. Mm -hmm. um, you can also get Ruins of the em Ruin of Empires by um, Count Bon on um, Bonnie, B O L N E Y, Count Bonnie. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Ruin of Empires, and like I said, Destruction of Black Civilizations by Chancellor Williams had to be in everybody collection. These are books in which that. Um, go that goes in on our history. Okay. And what took place? Powerful, powerful, powerful. My uh, brother, I mean, like, I know we could talk for 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 probably another ten hours, and we, we still wouldn't get to all of the information. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> we got more things to do, and um, hopefully, uh, more time to 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 do some talking on some of this this, this subject matter because. I believe that you know brothers like yourself, um, brother, uh, brothers like Asir, the Duke of Jesus, and all the other good brothers and sisters out there who put in all the effort to get information back out to the people. You guys are doing a stellar job, and 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 I know it's sometimes not you know not something that comes with any um, immediate rewards or gratification, because you know some of our people are so stiff-necked and stubborn, and even well, I, mean, I mean, look at the Empress; she died in the nursing home. Look at um, Dr. Ben, he died in the nursing home. So this is the way that uh, our people take care of, um, of their people who are doing this and who are putting their life on the line. Right? So um, you can't expect too much, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, let's keep your head up, man. Stay strong, you know, the ancestors definitely with, 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 um, with you. Um, anything I can do to support your efforts, you know, please, you have my number, you can always reach out. Um, we do want to try to bring some of this information to the islands. And I'm be working um, with you know some 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 of my colleagues down in, in um in the Caribbean to, to make that a reality. Hopefully, sometime very very soon, because we wanna we wanna try to you know basically open up the floodgates to our people and let us you know let, let them know you know who they are and 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 you know uh, and that our history doesn't begin or end with slavery. Right. Exactly. The, the people that were enslaved, a lot of them, as far as I, 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 I've come, even when they explain it, you know, they said they were, they were at war and they were prisoners of war. So here you have prisoners of war, but you're calling your prisoners of war slave, or they're calling their prisoners of war slave. Slave. We don't call the Vietnamese prisoners of war slave. We don't call the Korean prisoners of war slave, but we call African prisoners of war slaves. Exactly. And we use that, that's used as a way to psychologically program us. In, um, to, 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 to start, yeah, 
yeah, to start from, from a very weak, weak, weak place you know, where you see yourself in a servile state, you see yourself as not contributing to civilization. Right. And, and then, speaking of that, get the book Now Valley Contribution to Civilization by Anthony T. Brown. Oh, yeah, that's a great book. That's a great book. That's, that, I would recommend that to people who, you know, are probably just starting out. That's a great, great book. Um, Anthony Brown, I think I might have that in here, but I know. Six and Race by J.A. Rogers. What they never told you in history class. Mm -hmm. This is Pages of History by Indo Kimmich Kush. With those two books, uh, those three books, actually, J.A. Rogers, um, Six and Race, Volume 1, 2, and 3. Get mm -hmm. those books, you know, because this is information that it's hard to find nowadays. You know? yeah. so start getting this information and put this in your library because this is heirlooms that you can actually pass on to your children. You can read these stories and this truth, these facts to your children as they're growing up to instill within them this great heritage and history that we are global people, that we just didn't come here brought by no goddamn Europeans on slave ships 400 years ago. Indeed, indeed. Um, one last thing before you go, Dr. Lim. I wanted to get to this, but it seems like we've come to it at the very end of this talk. Can you just, in, 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 in the most um, succinct way that you can, detail what is Moorish science? All right. The word Moorish, as we broke down, ties back to land or is it related to nationality. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, science means to know. Mm -hmm. So basically, know thyself. Mm -hmm. That's what this means. More science means to know thyself. So um, that's the first um, caption that you will find on the whole, Morris Holy Quran, Circle 7. As you open the book up, the first thing you will see is know thyself. As this was told to us and shown to us, and for those who have witnessed and gone to Egypt, um, you will see it on the temple walls and on the temple um, outer structures as you enter into um, the temples, um, know thyself which is basically in the image of what is called um, the Yashet, which is Washita, a Washashet, uh, which is the sun with the wings, which looks like the upper portion of the Caduceus symbol, which is on the hospitals around the world, which was a symbol in which that was brought forth um, during the third dynastic period by Imhotep, um, who was the first, um, he was the father of medicine, you know, um, so um, Hippocrates, um, 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 who is known as the father of medicine to the Greeks, actually was based on um, that character was based on Imhotep, who actually was the father of medicine. Okay, you know, that's where you get the Hippocratic oath from. So, Morris science is 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 what exactly? What is it to 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 practice Morris science? Is it? You know, by Studying history, is it is knowing how to build, is it knowing how to fight, is it knowing how to uh, all of law, like all of it. Yeah, all of it. There's, there's nine battle fronts that Dr. Francis Quest Rosen, her teacher, Dr. Lady Fuller speaks of. There's nine battle fronts. You got religion, sex, law, labor, economics, history, edutainment, uh, um, entertainment, um, education land issues you know so we talk about you know health you know we talk about nine to eleven different issues you know in which that we have to develop a battlefront against so more science is to help you know thyself in all those areas to the highest um levels and that, and that, and with that i want to say thank you my brother thank you so much for all the jewels and all the gems that you dropped today I know um, I definitely learned a couple of things and I'm going to, you know, it's going to make me study even more now. And um, I hope those who are watching live or those who will view it later um, also benefited from this. Please, let, again, you know, let us know how we can reach you on social media, where we, what kind of products you have and where we can get them. All right. Once again, www.dralimelbay.com, D-R-A-L-I-M-E-L-B-E-Y.com. We have our ancestral herbs, our ancestral teas. I am a um, certified um, trained herbalist, um, trained at the Emmanuel Bible College, become a master herbalist. Um, also was a student of Dr. Paul Gauss, um, who was one of the foremost top herbalists in the world uh, with new body products. 
Um, so ours is called the Hillen Wings um, Institute um, Products, also Ancestral Herbs. Um, so please support us. You know, uh, we need as much help as possible, you know, and um, we do this 24 seven, you know, um, this is my life is getting information out to the people. You know, um, I'm not sitting up in a corporation, um, you know, making six figures, you know, I'm here studying, researching, getting this information out, writing books so that we can have a better understanding to know thyself to the highest level. All right. And with that, I want to say thank you again, Dr. Aline Bay. This is the Hut Nine. This is Mind TV, Vogue Thoughts and Inspired Thinking. We were at um, Dr. Aline Bay, a uh, Moorish scientist, uh, basically give us a little, a little, a little, little bit of, of some of the history and some of the things that um, have been left out of the history books by, you know, the people who put them together. But um, we will have him back on the show, have, have him back on the platform to basically, you know, go into more um, uh, more stuff, more in depth as well. Um, we've talked now for about two plus hours, so I know that, you know what I mean? Um, um, you must have got something out of it. I certainly did, and I'm grateful, my brother. Thank you so much again. And with that, I just want to say peace out and thank you. All right, peace.